Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back to my kitchen. Today's video is sponsored by Native, the makers of deodorants that are aluminum, paraben, cruelty free, and also vegan. We love Native and our home because it works. The scents are not overpowering and there are so many great scents to choose from, including a limited edition, sensitive scents and a holiday edition as well, including candy cane, sugar cookie, and fresh mistletoe. Besides its effectiveness, we really love Native because it doesn't cause my husband to break out, and after he does his run, he still smells great. Native has a plastic-free line that uses the same deodorant formula in more sustainable packaging. The packaging is made from paperboard, and Native is a proud partner of 1% for the Planet, which commits 1% of the plastic-free deodorant sales to environmental nonprofits. Native's deodorant goes on smoothly, it dries quickly, it doesn't feel sticky, and most importantly, it works. My husband's go-to scent is charcoal. We love it. It smells fresh and clean without being perfumey. So three plastic-free deodorants normally go for $39, but if you click the link down below and use my code ME7, you can receive them for $29, and that's 25% off. Big thanks to Native for sponsoring this video and for their continued support. Now today, I am going to be making a recipe out of this beautiful book. It's called Mooncakes and Milk Bread, written by Christina Cho. She sent this to me and it is absolutely lovely. This book contains recipes that were inspired by Chinese bakeries. So stinking wonderful. And while we do have the same last name, I don't believe we are related, but we could be, because look at that picture. I mean, that, who I found out is Uncle Wayne, looks just like my Uncle Herb. Like. They're doppelgangers, it's so great. <laughs> Besides the charming pictures, there are beautiful recipes that look so stinking great and totally remind me of my childhood. I grew up in the East Bay in California and a few times a year we would head out to San Francisco to buy buns and dim sum and they were so stinking great. This was my favorite bao. I grew up calling these gaimi bao, but they're also known as gaime bao. These are coconut, cocktail buns. My other favorite bao was this one, the bolo bao, chashu baos. This is the steam version. Scrum shas. She even shows you how to make homemade chashu. I really want to make these too. These are Hokongong's almond cookies. I haven't had dim sum in a couple years now. <laughs> and these are called hakao. And these are shrimp dumplings. I have this beautiful translucent skin on um, they're just so good i love them so much well i want to make everything but today we're going to be making this recipe right here have you had one of these before i grew up calling these anta but they're most commonly known as danta and they are egg tarts look at that they're so stinking cute little individual servings of egg custard in a flaky little shell, but just your own little portion, your own little tart. Christina also includes a recipe for making the beautiful puff pastry as well. Alrighty, let's get started. I've never made puff pastry before, but it is a form of a laminated dough, kind of similar to croissants. Laminated meaning there's a layer of dough, a layer of fat, a layer of dough, a layer of fat. Bum, 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 bum. The fat in between separates those very thin layers of pastry, and that gives us that signature crispy flakiness. So the first thing we need to do is create the dough and what she calls a butter block. So in a food processor, we're gonna combine our cold butter that we've cut up along with our flour, give it a few pulses to break it up, and then let it go until it forms a smooth kind of crumbly paste. Initially, it'll seem very, very dry, but the butter will get incorporated with the flour. Turn that out onto a sheet of plastic wrap and then form it into kind of a patty with a sort of square shape that's about five inches by five inches. And then I place that in the refrigerator. Next, we're going to make the dough portion. Very similar process. We're gonna take our food processor. I didn't even bother washing my food processor out. And we're gonna add our flour, our salt, egg, and ice water. Blend that all up until we get a nice ball. 
turn that on onto some plastic wrap and that too we should flatten out into a disc wrap it up and place it in the refrigerator both of these we need to refrigerate it for at least 30 minutes we don't want it to be so cold that we can't roll it out but it definitely needs to be cold so that the butter doesn't get incorporated into the dough as we're rolling out all the layers alrighty so here are my two prepared blocks the butter block and my pastry dough here now we're going to do the process of the folding, which I've always found a little bit intimidating. That's why I've never attempted homemade croissants because I should though. Like a good pan au chocolat is just, that was my favorite pastry growing up. I actually didn't like the pastry so much, just look at the bar of chocolate inside. Yeah, encourage me to attempt it because I've, I find making laminated dough very intimidating. So encourage me in the comments to Emmy. and I'll probably listen. Alrighty, now let's fold our puff pastry. Rolling pin, maybe a bench scraper, and have some impeccably clean hands. Of course, I'm wearing a dark colored shirt because I'm dealing with flour. A lot of people say, Emmy, why don't you get an apron? I don't know, maybe I feel encumbered by an apron. Anyways, let's get to rolling pastry. <laughs> We're gonna lightly flour our surface. And we're going to roll the dough out to 7 by 10 inches. I'm going to lightly flour both sides. Oh yeah, it rolls beautifully. Lifting it so it doesn't stick. Now we're going to take our butter block, which I marked it with the B. Baby and me. That was pretty unnecessary because it's pretty easy to tell the difference between the butter block and the pastry. But you know, it's fun to make bees. Then we'll pull this flap over and fold this one over and then fold this over like this. We're making a little parcel. How cute is that? This way, seam side down, and we're gonna roll it again. Now the butter's in there. And the butter should be firm, but not too hard that we can't roll it. So I'm going to press it down with the initial kind of oomphies. Okay, okay. It's a little bit firm, but not too hard to roll out. I've been recently saying butter for some reason, like as if I'm, you know, British or something. I don't know. It's kind of fun to enunciate the two T's. Butter, instead of saying butter. I don't know. Although smooth like butter, that's pretty fun too. Oh yeah, six inches by 12 inches. Girl, we're there. One side down. Dust off any excess flour. And then fold this one up like an envelope. Do, 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 do. It's like a clutch. It's like I'm going to the Met Gala. Hi, I've arrived with my puff pastry dough. Honestly, Emmy. And Push again and roll it out. Now we're going to fold this side up and this side down. Doo -doo -doo. Then that's it. That was our final fold. We're going to roll this out to 8 by 12 inches. We're going to wrap it with some plastic wrap and then refrigerate it for at least 30 minutes before we cut it out. Or you can prepare this and allow it to rest overnight. Friday lovelies, the puff pastry has been resting for a half an hour in the fridge. And now we're going to roll it out and shape them into their little tiny diminutive tarts. That's my favorite part, that little individual little tart, little pie of your own. It makes you feel special because you are. You're absolutely 100% special. You are lovable and worthy of love. Don't forget that. Okay, now I've got the cutest little pie tart tins I've ever seen. These are like Barbie size gold mining pans. <laughs> Not really. These are little tart molds I found. I'll put a link down below to where I got them. The set I got also included this fluted version. So if I ever wanna try making brioche or other kinds of tarts, I can. I also want to attempt a different kind of egg tart after I attempt this one, the Portuguese one, which looks lovely. It's also very similar to the dantat that you can find in Macau, which is influenced by Portugal, and it has a more caramelized top on the 
surface of the egg custard, but one egg custard at a time. And we're going to roll this out into a 12 by 16 inch rectangle. Ah, oh, yes, this dough rolls out so beautifully. So we are at 12 by 16 inches. Now we're going to take this fluted circle cutter that's four inches in diameter, much bigger than the diameter of our little tart pan. But that's important because we want it to overlap over the edge of the pan because it's going to shrink a lot during baking. Cut it out. She says four inch diameter, right? And we're gonna press it into our little tin. I'm only supposed to have a quarter inch overhang and that seems like a lot. So I think I'm gonna dial this back a little bit and use the next size down. Yeah, that's better. Even though it says three inches in diameter, the tart pan narrows down. That looks perfect. So the pastry shells are cooling in the fridge. Now it's time to make the egg custard. So I made a simple syrup, combined the sugar and the water together, brought that up to a boil and boiled it for about three minutes. And then I turned off the heat and let it cool. So in this bowl, I've got two eggs and one yolk. I'm gonna beat them up. Such a beautiful color. We're gonna add some milk and a little splash of vanilla. Mix that up. Whisk in our syrup. Pour it through a strainer. That'll get any little eggy bits that didn't get combined. And I'm gonna transfer this into a pitcher for easy pouring. Oh, look how cute everybody is. That's a uniform on a tray. So you may think that you could just place it in the oven like this, but no, we need more spacing and i.e. more heat around each individual tart. Otherwise we could have just made these in a muffin tin. Now we're going to take our egg mixture and fill each tart, but we're gonna leave about a quarter inch of spacing because they're going to expand when the pastry is actually going to shrink. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Okay, now I'm gonna pop this into a preheated 400 degree oven, bake them for 15 minutes, then reduce the heat to 350 and bake them for another 20 to 25 minutes until there's a slight jiggle. And then we're gonna let them cool just a little bit and then Alrighty, I'll see you in a little bit. Alrighty, my lovelies, I am back and look at my beautiful untot. They are so gorgeous. They came out beautifully. These couple ones right here are a little lumpy on the surface, but I'm sure they're gonna taste delicious. But look at this glisten. Look at that. It just be and then look at all the layers. My laminated dough. Ha 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 ha. Now, the final touch to make these look just like the ones that you get at the bakery is to take Wrapper like that. <laughs> Just like how I remember. They're so stinking cute. All right, my lovelies, let's finally give my homemade anta a taste. Ah, oh, these look so great. Itadakimasu. good the filling is spot on exactly how I remember sweet slightly vanilla a little bit eggy but definitely dessert like tender kind of not gelatinous but soft and custardy I have to say the crust is an improvement and it's a little bit different than I remember did you hear that crunch and has a delicious buttery flavor the flavors I remember of the crust were more of a lard based crust so still equally flaky and crisp but more of a neutral flavor not this lovely buttery rich flavor which is so good and goes well with that delectable sweet eggy filling mm. it's such an interesting experience it's such a throwback yet simultaneously it feels present and modern and I think that's simply the addition of butter rather than lard. But so good. So my mother used to work on Market Street in San Francisco. And on her lunch break, she would walk to Chinatown 
and pick up a few of these for my brother and I, among other dim sum snacks. And she would bring them home to us. And so I'm so pleased that I'll be able to share these with my own children. So thanks, Christina. Hmm. Alrighty, my lovelies, thanks so much for joining me and big thanks to Native for sponsoring this video. Three plastic-free deodorants normally go for $39, but if you click the link down below and use my code, you can get them for $29, which is 25% off. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Like this video. Subscribe. And I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. Uh. <laughs>